Hello and welcome to Lockdown. I'm your host, Richie Litchfield. Now, this show is a light-hearted and upbeat look at what's happening that's positive out there from a single man's perspective, especially under these lockdown restrictions. Things like, how do I make a cake? How do I shoot a video? My hair's getting a bit too long. I can't go to the barbers. How on earth am I gonna get this cut? How can I make my own hand gel? These are some of the items I'm gonna be aiming to have a go at on the show with the help of my very special guest experts, all via the magic of Skype. <gasps> In today's show, I'm gonna show you how I managed to book a cruise from Copenhagen, Denmark, to Oslo in Norway and return, including flights from Stansted, for less than £100 for two of us. Whoa! But first, let's take a look at the news. A new craze is hitting the global online social networks with people in isolation filming themselves, taking the rubbish bins out dressed up to the nines. From ball gowns, tiaras, to even a Madonna Madam X. People are looking at creative ways to fill a void and dressing up to take the bins out is now the new norm. As people get restless being locked in, one crazy individual tried to escape the house dressed as a garden bush. The incident happened in Stevenage, Hertfordshire and neighbours couldn't believe their eyes when they saw the green bush man using stealth-like movements to move down the drive. The video has gone viral with over 16 million views. It's beginning to look a lot like the most surreal Christmas anyone's ever seen. Even though we're in the middle of spring, people are raiding those attics and putting up those Christmas decorations just to raise spirits. Even channels such as the Hallmark Channel are playing traditional festive movies to keep people entertained. Finally, from bowl cuts to buzz cuts, some people are getting desperate to get their hair cut and it's seeing a classic bowl cut or crew cut now beginning to lead the way in fashion circles. But how do you cut your hair if you're on your own and in lockdown? Well, today I spoke to Channel 4's reality TV star from the hit show, The Salon, Sonia Wadley, about some tips on how to improve my appearance. Here on The Lockdown Show, one thing that is actually driving me completely and utterly barmy at the moment um, is the fact, A, I've got no sort of human contact with anyone, and B, my hair. It's driving me up the wall when it seems to be getting longer from the sides. I'm speaking to a lot of my friends on Skype and on FaceTime. They're all saying the same thing. My hair's getting longer. I think I'm gonna end up with some sort of 70s style haircut at the end of this. Uh, and it's one of these things where you can't actually go to a hairdresser's because they're all not allowed to open at the moment because of the lockdown restrictions. So what do you do about it? So joining me on the line, I'm joined with a very, very special guest. And um, for those of you that remember, around, around about 15 years ago, there was a Channel 4 reality TV show called The Salon, which was an absolute hit. It was like Big Brother set in a hair salon slash spa. And joining me in the studio today, I've got a very special guest star. All the way from that series, it's the lovely... Sonia Wadley, who used to be Sonia Riley. Hello, Sonia, how are you? Very well, thank you. <laughs> it's great having you here. I've got to say, you haven't changed a bit since the show, and it's 15 years ago, you've still got the same haircut. Crazy, isn't it? How many, you know, how these years fly? Crazy. It must seem like <laughs> about five minutes since you were uh, on the actual show itself. Yeah, it's uh, absolutely flown. <laughs> it was the second reality TV show on the screen, wasn't it? After Big Brother, I think. Yes, it was. It was. Yeah. Well, it was. It was. It sort of went. It started off kind of like undercover. It was. It was all very low key, wasn't it? And then, yeah. and then the kids went on to their school holidays, and they obviously all tuned in, and they changed the time of the show, from what I remember. Yeah. And it went, it was, wasn't it? And it went to, yeah, it went into the school holiday period yeah. and it just went and it rocketed. What? And you got fame overnight, really, didn't you? Suddenly, so from one minute you yeah. weren't being recognised, the next minute you were. How did that feel? Oh, gosh, yeah, well, I was in my uh, environment that time. <clears throat> no, and I love, so it's just not, it felt just natural, really. So, so 
15 years has gone past, Sonia. It's <laughs> a lot of time. What have you been up to in all that time? Oh, gosh. Um, marriage, children, and a barber shop. Wow. So, and you, from what I remember, you were based up north in Derbyshire. Are you still around that area? Back in my hometown, Derbyshire, yes, yeah. <laughs> from going to London to Northampton to meet my husband and then back to Derbyshire to settle. <laughs> wow. And have you been inclined to do any more TV shows or are you quite happy where you are at the moment? No, I'm quite happy with family life and I love my barber shop and I'm, I'm quite content, really. Yeah, very content. Fantastic. Right, so you must be getting a lot of uh, people contacting you over the telephone um, about yes. hair and what, what what can they do about it. What's the common problem that you're experiencing? God, the worst is the home haircuts. There's some terrible, terrible home haircuts out there and it's like, stop, stop. I tell you what, when all this is over, the queue putting everybody's haircuts right will be horrendous. So I'm, <laughs> I think people need a bit of help. What's the classic thing they're doing wrong? I mean, I can imagine some people just putting a back to the back to the seventies, putting a bowl over your head and chopping round it. Are we going to see a few more of those bowl cuts coming out? Well, we'll have some long, a lot of long hairstyles, and then a lot of bald hair haircuts. I think shave overs. I think mean, so? people have been shaving the sides and taking it too high up. There's lots of horrendous Mohicans and lots of bodge jobs oh my gosh it's terrible i'm cringing but how, Cring how, how how can people sort of like cope with their hair at the moment especially if they're like me they're on their own <laughs> how can they keep their hair tidy and oh. sort of like modern looking other than wear a hat we're gonna help them out aren't we today and do some tidying up uh, I think it's a good idea. I think what we should do is we should actually do a couple of um, a couple of sort of like manoeuvres, hair manoeuvres, um, or, or hair procedures um, that anyone can do in their home that will just um, make a difference. Yeah. So I have here um, a comb. Yeah. And I've also got a pair of sharp scissors. Good. Yeah. Anything else that you think I need? Do I need water? Yes, you could have a bit of uh, water spray. Because oh, you I've don't... got spray. I've already got a cup. I don't have any sprays. <laughs> Just well, spilt it buy... down myself as well. <laughs> you can buy a little cheap water spray out of boots. But you can always put the uh, comb under a water tap. Well, we'll just dip it in the cup for now. Let's, let's yeah. keep it down to basics. We can't leave our homes. I don't particularly want to start going into um, the town centre shopping um, unless I really have to. So I'm at home. I've got a pair of scissors. I've got me. Um, I've got me comb. What's the first thing that you think I should be working on here? You can see my hair at the moment. It's getting quite long round the sides. What do you reckon? Well, the first thing that grows is a fringe. So okay. the fringe people always real make a real mess of the fringe. Because they just comb it down and then go and it looks awful. So I've got a good tip for a fringe cut. Okay, what do I need to do then? So what do I do with mine at the moment? Because obviously it looks absolutely beautiful at the moment, doesn't it? It looks really good. Two-toned as well. You've kept your, you've kept your blonde in the end. Oh, it's natural well, as well. <laughs> well, if you get your comb and then comb it right up in the air, it's getting, quite, it it's getting quite long there, isn't it? Isn't it? But then hold it between your two fingers. Okay, so I'm, I've got... Right, which hand am I going to be using? I'm, I'm right-handed, so I'm obviously going to be using the right-hand scissors, aren't I? Yeah, so hold it in your left. You can actually, when you comb it up, put your comb down when you've got it in your fingers. I'm doing it... <laughs> Okay, we'll do a little bit. <laughs> so I'm, oh, yeah. now, I'm now there, yeah? Is that right? Can you see that there on camera? Is that right? Is that, 
Is that right, Sandy? Come on, you've got to take, you've got to show me this. Oh. this... Curl it up, wait, and as soon as you curl it up, grasp it in your fingers and drop the comb. Okay, so, right, I'm doing it now. I can work out. Comb up, do a scissor with your... Oh, like that, hand. like what they do in the hairdressers. Yes, okay. that's it. So I've got a little the whole... bit there. Then get your scissors. Oh God, help us, watch your fingers. Yeah. It is quite tricky here, so you do need to have to have a mirror um, when you're doing this. So uh, uh, you do. It would be advisable to have a mirror, and I can feel it with my. I can feel. It. Stop making me laugh. I can. I can. You've got off the screen. It's that bloody long. I can't see it. Is it? Bend yeah. it. Don't uh, hold your scissors at an angle so you're chipping in. To the ends rather than cutting it across because when you cut across you get a straight line when you chip okay. in you get a look i'm doing it oh well it's coming off yeah there's, oh, bits, coming, there's bits coming off there oh. you obviously need to have a mirror don't you i have one here's one i had earlier can you see my head all right by the way sonia or am i coming off the screen no, I can see you better now. Okay, but maybe I need to tilt the screen up a little bit like that. So, <laughs> I have a little mirror. It used to talk to me, it used to say how beautiful I was. Oh. I look just I'm like a sleeping beauty mirror. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I would just, <laughs> anyway, I would recommend use a mirror. Um, obviously you're not doing a Skype call and a, a TV show at the same time. So I'm gonna do this again then. As you said, comb upwards, grab oh, in a scissor, scissor position scissor. at the top so you have some hair sticking out. Now be very careful. Your scissors are very, very no. sharp at home. You don't want to end up cutting yourself. This is where you need the mirror. So this is where the bathroom will come in handy. Okay, and what I'm doing is yeah. I'm just basically, I'm not going to chop one in a straight line. I'm actually going to chip down and I'm just going to chip That's like it. that. And I can feel the hair actually coming off now. Now that's actually yeah. taking some thickness out the front of it as well, Sonia, isn't it? Yes, because when you cut into it, it takes the thickness out and a bit of the length, and you'll get a nice, soft, jagged cut rather than a harsh line. Right, so we've taken quite a bit off <laughs> my poor hair. I'm going to end up with patches all over it. So we've taken quite a bit of hair off there already, my lovely blonde, gorgeous locks. Um, what other techniques should I be aware of as well? Because we, we've done the fringe now, so how much do you reckon somebody should take off the fringe? Quarter of an inch, I think. Okay. Because you have to take a quarter of an inch a month. So really? I reckon about a good quarter of an inch is plenty. So um, that's around, in centimetres, that's what, about a centimetre? No. Oh. Half a centimetre, isn't it? Yeah. But what you can do to check it, you can comb it all the way down and then just if it touches your eyebrows, that's great. Right, because you cannot, it. yeah, comb it down. That... Is that, <laughs> is that yeah. Gampache? But that's all right because it's nice and all different lengths. You don't want to line like a Lego haircut, do you? No. So that, that's fine. Okay, so that's one technique that we've got at the front. So we've taken off um a little bit and i need to really do this in front of a mirror so i'm not going to do the whole the whole fringe while you're watching the, at home so the next technique that you've got for us that we should be working on um is what sonia well i think round the ears because that's the next place it grows the fringe and then round the ears i find that the ears actually and the thing is around with hair around the ears i find it yeah. ages you as well doesn't it because you go through that transition period where it just doesn't feel right it's not too short and it's not too long yeah. i mean personally myself i do like and i'm going to use the jargon that the kids use at the moment a skin fade Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but i can't do a skin fade at the moment that, because uh, <laughs> i've got a pair of scissors not a zzz, zzz, zzz. Um, so what would you do here then how would you cut the hair around your ears Right, the best thing to do is bend the ear forward and then comb the hair all towards the ear. So I'm going to wet the comb. Yeah, wet the comb. Wet the comb. And then what, am I brushing down? 
towards the ear. Yeah. Yeah. And then just literally snip downwards because it's even. Okay. So, so this, this you've got to be very careful about. Okay, so uh, do this in front of a mirror, and if you're not very, if, you, if you've got a shaky hand or, or you're a little bit nervous, don't do it because you could end up cutting yourself. But for those that are feeling a bit confident, I would recommend using a blunt pair of scissors to be perfectly honest. Because the well, last thing I want you to do is chop your ears off. Uh, <laughs> you must have seen somebody. Ah, come on. Ah, well, it's not easy, is it? You must have done this in barber school. So I've got my finger where the top of my ear is, just here, and I'm just going to snip. Just, just from the top of your ear down. Just like yeah, there. High up. Now this is where you do need. It actually is kind of, with if you can yeah. feel your way. Um, yeah. It is relatively kind of straightforward. How's that looking? How's that looking? That, you can feel the scissors on the top of your fingers, so you won't cut your ear. Right. You, so. you use your fingers as um. A protection on the on the top of your ear, so you won't cut your ear. That's it. You're doing it. Yeah. Well done. That's awesome. And then I've got no ear. It's falling off. Ah. I'm joking. And then put your finger as a guide across your ear like that, and then cut down towards the front on your sideboard. Uh, no, hold your ear flat. No, that's it. And cut along the top of your ear there. I'm doing it. You want to it. Yeah, I'm doing it. The bits come off. <clears throat> it's quite a bit come off actually. Well, this is where you actually do need to have a mirror. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of one of the essential things you do need to have. So yeah, doing it on a Skype call here, um, you're getting the idea. Uh, so a yeah. couple of little practices there that um, really would help um, with home hairdressing on your own. Obviously, it is always ideal to have somebody there doing it for you. But in the present climate, particularly with the lockdown, can't always have someone there. And there's lots of people who are on their own and uh, want to cut their hair or just keep themselves in trim and in shape. So that's a couple of techniques there from the lovely Sonia. Um, we have got more techniques which you're going to be showing us as we go uh, through the show. Um, what's our next one that we're going to be learning, Sonia? Well, uh, probably uh, cutting the back of the hair will be the next one. Now that's going to be quite tricky. That's going to be quite tricky. So I'm going to master this first. So after the, the, the call is finished, after the show's finished, I will go into the bathroom, I will tidy up, and I will actually practice those techniques. So the front fringe, yeah. taking off a quarter of an inch uh, by mm -hmm. always combing up and cutting at angles so chipping into the hair and then around the actual ears itself by pulling down using your finger as a guide and snipping down along your finger and pointing down towards the mouth and turning your finger around so your your wrist is now towards the back of your neck and your fingers pointing upwards and using the finger as a guide Sonia that's been absolutely fantastic well I'm looking forward to the next session that we do <laughs> So how are you keeping busy in the uh, in the lockdown? You've got two kids there in Derby and a husband. What's keeping you uh, What's keeping you active? What's what, what things are you actually doing? We're gardening. We're painting. We're homeschooling the children. We're just keeping busy, really. There's loads uh, of DIY, loads of DIY product. Uh, there's no. loads of DIY uh, projects going on at the moment. Just around me in the neighborhood, I can hear drills going off, banging, people are putting together stuff. So yeah, people are keeping busy. It's great to see you, yeah. um, Sonia. And it's good that we've actually had those those uh, techniques as well. So uh, thank you very much for joining me live on the show. And we'll see you on the next show, Sonia, as well, won't we? Look. Oh, wow, this picture. Look at this picture here, everybody. This is uh, when we were at a nightclub called Sound, uh, which was in the West End. And we went to see Atomic Kitten. And it was hosted by the lovely Dusty O. And we got into the VIP section, which was absolutely fantastic. We did a little interview with them. We had pictures. We got into the front cover of magazines. It was fantastic. Brilliant. Anyway, so it's, day, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show and I look forward to uh, some more tips from you as well and on the next one. So thank you very much, Sonia. Yeah! Bye! Now, I don't think I did a bad job. What do you think? Do you think it's bad?
I don't think it's too bad, really. Now, with all the lockdown cabin fever people are experiencing, people are also looking at destinations and trip ideas to take when all of this is finally over. Now, just before the lockdown here in the UK, I took a trip with a mate to Denmark and joined a cruise which took us to Norway and back. Now, the whole trip, including flights, accommodation and the cruise, cost us less than £100 for two of us. But how did we do it? Watch this. We started our journey at Stansted Airport and took a low fare plane over to Copenhagen. On our arrival, we took a metro into the centre of Copenhagen. Right, so I'm on the metro and we got on at the airport and we're taking it all the way down to a place called Norraport, Norport. I think that's how you say it anyway. So it should take about 20 minutes. It's really easy negotiating the metro and booking your ticket at the airport. And this particular station is kind of in the centre of Copenhagen. You also need to come to this particular station if you're catching the shuttle bus down to the DFDS ship. The bus stop for the shuttle bus is actually a five minute walk away from the station. But do find out exactly where this bus stop is before you set off. Otherwise you could be walking around the area like we were. Before exploring the city, we decided to warm ourselves up, have a coffee and a traditional Danish pastry. And there's definitely no shortage of shops selling these. You can't come to Denmark without sampling a traditional Danish pastry. However, to the Danish, these are actually Viennese bread or Wienerbrod. Now, the traditional Danish pastry or Wienerbrod has got a sweet filling such as jam or apricot with sprinkling of icing sugar or hazelnuts. This has got icing and a little bit of cream in there. I've got one with a bit of custard in as well. Mm. They're fantastic, but bloody expensive, I've got to tell you. Copenhagen is a city of spires and there's plenty of attractions to keep you busy. There's even a theme park in the centre, but we decided we were going to go and see one of the most famous and iconic statues in Copenhagen, the Little Mermaid. Luckily, the Little Mermaid can be found about 20 minutes walk from where the ship actually docks at the Langolini Promenade. Created in 1913 by Edward Erikson, the bronze statue of the Little Mermaid has become an emblem of Copenhagen. Inspired by the fairy tale writer Hans Christian Andersen, the mermaid sits on a pile of rocks at the waterside. She's had a very eventful life, having been beheaded twice and has been the target for vandals and political activists over the years. She's even been banned from Facebook for exposing herself under the Facebook nudity ban. Loads of statues all around this park. It's definitely worth a trip here. And uh, make sure you wrap up warm because it does get a little bit nippy. Now, right by where the ferry actually docks is the genetically modified Little Mermaid. Take a look at this. The mermaid sits on a pile of rocks near the waterside. It was designed in 2006 by Bjorn Norgard, who created the genetically modified Little Mermaid, which was part of the exhibition, The Genetically Altered Paradise. So far, this lucky mermaid has avoided any vandalism unlike her older sister. It is now time to head on over and join the ship, which is just a short walk away. You can actually get onto the ship a little bit earlier, but you can't get into your cabin until 3 p.m. It's all very modern. You've got a self-check-in here. Relatively simple, just enter your booking number, in it goes. So insert passport. The self-check-in is relatively easy. In fact, the whole boarding process is pretty easy. It's quite a lengthy corridor as well, just like on the, uh, the larger ships I've been on. This is quite big actually. Okay, so, so we're gonna be in the middle of the ship. So that's good because it doesn't get as rocky. If you're prone to seasickness, little tip, get a cabin in the middle. Come on, follow me in. It's compact, it's compact, it's bijou. Uh, we've got a couple of beds, a couple of bunk beds here. Obviously, if there's more people in the, uh, in the cabin these pull down because this is extra bunk beds uh, but it's nice and cozy i'm pleased to say they do supply towels because we we're wondering that um, we've got a little desk area here and a wardrobe or some, somewhere to hang your clothes just there bathroom it's got a shower joe is going to be absolutely delighted 
we have a TV. So it's nice, it's compact. It's gonna do us all right for a couple of days. It's got no window, but hey ho, beggars can't be choosers. To get your bearings, it's always good to start at the guest service center and work your way around from there. It'll always come in handy, because I always get lost on ships, no matter which, how big they are. I always get lost and walk around in circles. Sure enough, this is the second time I've come down this corridor. Am I in the right place? This suite is called Gale. Now it's actually licorice and the Danish are absolutely crazy about it. They've got licorice ice cream, licorice beer, licorice cakes, just to name a few things. Now the Gale is actually Denmark's top selling sweets and they eat tons of it. They actually love this uh, salty snack, along with the Germans and also the Dutch. Let's try one. I can definitely taste the salt in it. Oh, I got a black tongue. We'll never do another one. I'm actually quite nice. I need to wash it down with this now. Cheers. After taking a short break and sampling a traditional famous Danish beer, we decided it was time to explore the ship in a bit more detail before sail away. The ship set sail from Copenhagen at around about 4.30 p.m. We're on deck for the traditional sail away. Bang on time, 4.30, we are setting off from Copenhagen, heading for Oslo in Norway. We should be arriving tomorrow around about 9.30. So we're right on top of the ship here, it's raining, uh, the weather's not very good, but you've got some amazing views all over Copenhagen. It's fantastic. And the ship is actually a lot bigger than I actually thought it was, to be perfectly honest. So earlier on, we went to see the genetically modified mermaid. That's where it is, just there. The ship was built in 1989. It was upgraded in 2019, and it actually boasts several luxury passenger cabins. It's got quite a few restaurants and even conference facilities as well. It takes around about 17 hours to reach Oslo from Copenhagen at a distance of around about 500 miles. Well, after a very hectic day traveling and sightseeing, it's now time to relax in the onboard spa. This is the life, all I need is a glass of champagne. The bubble zone has two jacuzzis and a small swimming pool. It costs about 50 Danish kroner to come in here, which is around about six pounds and uh, I've got full use of this till half past nine tonight and uh, for the first hour in the morning. The ship has a variety of restaurants to suit many tastes. From fine dining, pizzas, steaks to the buffet, the choice is there. I actually decided to go for pizza. But yeah, pizza's a good option. It's not as expensive as the steak or the buffet. In the evening, the crew lay on some entertainment from horse racing, bingo to quizzes. As it gets later, there's even a band and a disco for you to enjoy. After a pleasant night's sleep, we got up early to watch the sun rise and look at some of the beautiful scenery Norway has to offer. Norway is a country of islands and as we're heading into Oslo, we're surrounded by obviously the mainland, but lots of little islands scattered around. My advice to anyone taking this voyage is get up early and don't miss this beautiful scenery. You can actually bring your dog on board and this is the dog walking area. You follow these little paw, paw prints here and it takes you down to this little green area where they can go for a poop. The ship docks around about 9.30 in the morning and all passengers have to get off to clear border control. We've just come off the ship in Oslo and just as we come through customs, right outside the gates is a, um, a military museum and admission is free. So we're gonna go and have a quick look around before we uh, move off into the center of Oslo. So we've got till about 4.30 and it's 10 o'clock now. So we've got quite a bit of time to explore the city. So this museum is also a fortress. It's called Arkashush Fortress or Arkashush Castle. And it dates back right the way back to 1300. It's very historical and a massive cultural center for the whole of Oslo. The museum itself isn't actually the castle. The castle, Arcasus Castle, or the fortress, is on top of a hill. And we've just walked up it. We should get some amazing views from up here. Unfortunately, the castle was closed due to renovation work, but we did manage to get some amazing views over the harbour here in Oslo. 
The building right behind me here, this is the Opera House and it's actually modelled on an iceberg. So it looks like a gigantic iceberg coming out of the water. You can actually walk right up to the very top of it where you get some amazing views over the harbour and some of the hillsides and mountains in the distance. These boats here, these are sauna boats. You can hire them. Um, they're called cocks. And inside each one of these wooden cabins is a sauna. So when you've been in the sauna and you're really, really hot and you want to cool down, you just jump into this ice cold water here with salt sort of pop up. It's a nomadic art project. And uh, in here, these sort of pyramid style sort of buildings, they're saunas. So they have things like concerts and they show films. It's really, really cool. This guy here is currently building what is going to be the world's biggest wood burning sauna. After exploring this wonderful city, it's now time to get back on board. Time is now 4.30, it's time to leave Oslo. That's the opera house just there that we went to earlier on in the day. And you can see the fortress, which is right by the ship. That's it from a very windy Pearl Seaway ship heading now into Copenhagen. This mini cruise cost us less than 100 pounds. And this is how we did it. First things first, I managed to find two return journeys on Google Flights for £19.98 per person return. After searching about on the internet, I managed to find two return journeys on the cruise for £30 per person. To take advantage of some of the offers, avoid the school holiday period and try and book midweek. See what works for you, but be flexible. Well, that's it for this show. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. Coming up on Wednesday, the 8th of April, we've got another interactive pub quiz, Izzy Wizzy Quizzy, live from the studio. That's all happening at eight o'clock UK time. Yeah. Now I'm gonna be back next week with another great lockdown show. Thanks for watching. Yeah!